Hello, my name is Daryl McMaster, President of Sustainable Homes. Behind me is our Sustainable Home model. Now a lot of people ask, what exactly do you mean by sustainable? Well this house was built to make full use of what the environment will give us. It runs 100% on rainwater. It has a photovoltaic solar array to give us a net zero energy house. All the wastewater from this house is used on site in the backyard sprinklers. This house has over 3,600 square feet of living area. The total utilities, water, sewer, gas, electric, is between $50 and $75 a month. And we've been able to do this at a cost increase of only 10 to 12% above a standard house. Now, it is our smart design process that we've been able to implement the energy reduction. Our homes are 60 to 70% more energy efficient than any other standard house. We look at site orientation, we look at cross ventilation, we look at a number of items just to be able to reduce the electrical demands. Another part of our smart design process is we are concerned about the materials that we use, the distance that they travel, the types of materials that we have. Another part of our smart design process is spray foam insulation. The spray foam allows us to build in a tight building envelope. Now once we've created that tight building envelope, our concern turns to inside air quality. The EPA says that inside air quality in a standard house is two to three times worse than what it is on the outside. Now, Another thing that people ask, is this a one-of-a-kind concept house? No, this is how we've been building houses all across the Texas Hill Country for the last five years. What we're trying to do is be able to build in all the amenities that one would expect in a custom home without being an earth ship. Come on in, let's take a look. Of all the components that make up a sustainable home, rainwater harvesting seems to get the most attention. We're extremely fortunate today to have Rusty Hendrickson of Green Building Solutions, an accredited rainwater specialist, to give us some history and background on rainwater. Rainwater harvesting has been around for the millennia, and in many countries it is the only source of water. A properly designed, professionally installed and maintained rainwater harvesting system will give you an endless supply of high quality water. Now what happens here is we catch all the water from the roof. The water is then transferred through the gutters and then headed out to our cistern. But before we allow it to go into the cistern, it has to go through the first flush, whereby we take the first 100 gallons of water and basically discharge that water. We've been able to clean the leaves, clean off any kind of material that might have been in the roof. Now inside the tank we have two sets of filters before the water ever touches the main body of the cistern. This is all done by gravity. The water flows back to the house through a 50 micron filter, a 5 micron charcoal filter, and an ultraviolet light. The ultraviolet light displaces any and all bacteria. From the ultraviolet light, the water then goes into the house, giving our owners superior water, soft water. Now that we've captured this water, our concern turns to efficiency. With efficiency comes where we use in the majority of our water. Not just inside, but outside. 65 to 70 percent of all water used throughout the United States, especially in the South and Southwest, is directed to landscaping. Now, with that water, we're concerned with how it's being used. Well, we're transitioning now throughout the South to drought tolerant, drought resistant plants. One of the most efficient ways to water our native plants is through drip irrigation where the water goes directly to the root ball. Another thing that we're using is the water from our air conditioning condensate line. We're getting anywhere from 12 to 20 gallons of water per day and we're watering two separate planters just with that water. Now our focus turns to inside water efficiency where we're using dual flush toilets, low flow shower heads, low flow faucets, all water sense products. We're also using Energy Star dishwashers and washing machines to reduce the water inside. Our average customer uses 35 to 50 gallons of water a day, half of what the national average is. Water efficiency is a real key when it comes to running a fully sustainable home. Of all the components that make up our home, energy efficiency is the most prevalent. Now, for years we've known that we could build net zero energy houses. If you had a customer who was willing to spend enough money, the problem was his grandchildren would be the first to see the return on investment. 
What we do with our houses is we make them 60 to 70 percent more efficient than standard built houses. We do this through a number of processes, but mainly we do it through a tight building envelope. It's with that tight building envelope made up of spray foam insulation that allows us to reduce the electrical demand in this house on our air conditioning system. The air conditioning system on this house is a zoned system where we can shut down certain parts of the house at certain times of the day. It's comfort level of our customer that we're concerned with. This house uses fluorescent lights and LED light bulbs 100% in all of the fixtures. Speaking of fixtures, all the light fixtures in this house are Energy Star. Our appliances are Energy Star appliances using the least amount of electricity possible, which is key to energy reduction. We also have motion control light switches in every bedroom. So when someone leaves that bedroom, the lights will automatically shut off. We also have this same feature in our laundry and all of our bathrooms. The tankless water heater, which allows us to heat water on demand. So we're not heating water all day long, but only when we needed it. It isn't until we've done everything we can to reduce the electrical demand that our photovoltaic system makes financial sense and common sense. Behind me we have our inverter. The inverter is part of our photovoltaic solar array. Power is generated at the solar panels. It comes down to the inverter in a DC format. It is then changed over to AC power, which we then can use inside the house for appliances, lights, and all the needs inside the house. Now, during the day when we create more electricity than we need, what it does is it spins our meter backwards. At night, we then can get our power back that we generated during the day in excess. And what every fully sustainable home should have is nothing more than a natural gas burning car. Today, we're joined by Terry Green, a natural gas vehicle advocate. Terry, can you explain this car to us? Absolutely. This is a Honda Civic GX, which runs on clean burning domestic natural gas instead of gasoline. It's the only OEM product, meaning it's the only product that's actually produced here in the United States that for the light duty market. There are some other vehicles for heavy and medium duty, but this is the only light duty vehicle made in the United States. This beside me, is this the fueling station? Now this can fuel at home? This is what we call a home refueling unit, which is actually an appliance. What it does, it hooks onto your natural gas line just like your water heater or any other appliance you have and there's a small compressor inside and it's what we call a time fill unit which fills your vehicle over time. Terry, can you show us how this works? Absolutely. Excuse me. What happens is when you pull up at night, you're coming home, you're going to be home for the evening, you come over here, you take this hose and you just clamp it right onto the valve hmm. and you press start. So what this does is what we call a time fill unit, it will slowly fill your vehicle overnight. So when you get up in the morning, it'll be full. So you come over here, you press stop, and all you do is pull it off, put it back, and you're ready to go. You never have to visit another gasoline station. Terry, how much does this car cost to run? Well, it's going to vary from uh, month to month, depending on how much your local natural gas utilities gas cost is. But over a year, you're looking at about $1.25 per gallon of gas equivalent. Just how clean does this car run? Actually, this car has been certified by the EPA for the past seven years as the cleanest internal combustion engine on Earth. Natural gas is the cleanest fossil fuel we have. It's almost a zero emission vehicle. So not only do we have, let me get this straight, the cleanest burning car, the most economical car per gallon that we can fuel, but we also have the security of using it at home. Absolutely, you never have to go to a gasoline station again. Of all the things that make up a sustainable home, the most important component is design. It's at the design phase that we're looking for site orientation, passive solar, cross ventilation. We're looking at the porches. We're looking at overhangs. It's at that point that we can be able to control how we're going to energize the house. Also, we're concerned with waste management. Yeah, waste management at the design stage. We're concerned with the impact that our homes are going to have on the environment. This particular home and most of our homes are built with finger jointed studs, which are basically comprised of small pieces of wood that are reassembled back together. 
and then they create all the walls of our house. So what was once going to the landfill is now being used to completely rebuild houses. Once we've obtained a tight building envelope, our attention turns to inside air quality. The EPA says inside air quality is three to five times worse than what it is on the outside. Now how we address that issue is with our energy recovery ventilator. The energy recovery ventilator allows us to control molds and allergens inside the home. And we can change the air in the home two to three times a day if need be. The paints that we use in this house have no volatile organic compounds. The cabinets are built with no urea formaldehyde plywood. The finishes that we use are low VOCs. The floors are organic dyes with organic finishes. It's all of these things put together that create a healthy quality of life in your home. Net zero energy homes. Well, the truth is for years we've known that we could build net zero energy homes. The problem was the return on investment. Now, you could build a net zero energy home 20 years ago. The problem was uh, your grandchildren were probably the first people to see any kind of break even point. Now, we've been able to do that with our sustainable homes is show our customers a five to seven year return on investment. Now, that's before local, federal, and state incentives. We have a customer who's building a home right now whose return on investment is as short as three years. Imagine putting all the cost of your future utilities in the price of your home when you purchase it. Now, some people say, yeah, but that may increase my mortgage payment. True, it would. But what are the first eight to nine years of any 30-year mortgage? Interest. So now your utilities are tax deductible? Building a sustainable home not only makes sense for the environment, it makes financial sense. The return on investment is immense. Let me give you another example. We have a customer whose total cost of his photovoltaic system is $30,000. Now the local utility company is going to give him a cash check for roughly $18,000 of that cost. The federal government is going to throw in another 30% rebate on that. So he's going to be somewhere between $8,000 to $8,500 to have a net zero energy home in the cost at the time when the home is built. Now, how many of you want to do that? Sign me up. If I could put in the cost of my future utility bills when I build my home, that's what makes it sustainable. When that happens, then you know what? Everybody wants a greenhouse. They're green as in Benjamin Greens. By building a point source home, which is what our sustainable homes are, we generate enough electricity at the source of the home. We generate enough water at the source of the home. With the uncertainty of what the future is going to hold with the cost of electricity and water, the sustainable home offers our owners the security and knowledge that in the future they're going to have those precious resources. If there's one thing that I could leave you with today, it's this. Conservation far exceeds creation. Not just creation of power, not just conservation of water, but it is both working together. Yes, the future may be some wind, some solar, but it's conservation that is the answer. Hopefully we've been able to show you today that building a sustainable home is not a home of the future, that it can be done today. Not only does it make common sense, it makes financial sense. And this is something that we're doing today. Thanks again for your time.